Welcome to uh, our today's broadcast of our Daily Boost, and this is Dr. Charles and Devon here. I'm very excited to join me for this uh, a wonderful program. Uh, we are looking forward to an exciting time. We've been talking about you are God's choice, what it means to be God's choice, chosen to reign in life, chosen to become a lift of people. I'm glad you joined me this morning. Uh, yesterday, we had a great time at the Q&A, and we're just enjoying a bit of worship. But I know that God is going to do something amazing today. Get ready for something extraordinary to take place. I know it's going to be a great morning. I want to welcome those that are watching me. Good morning. We have uh, Emmanuel Demora. God bless you. We have Heavenly. We have Victoria, Pastor Victoria Godwin. Maria, uh, Pastor Diana. We have Steak. God bless you. We have Silas. God bless all of you. We have Jim. God bless you. I'm glad you joined me today. And we're talking about being God's choice, what it means to become God's choice. I am very excited because it is, it is one of my, uh, my delightful uh, topic to share with you that you are God's choice. The Bible declares, the Bible declares in John chapter 15 verse 16, it said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed you, the Amplified said, I have planted you, that you may go and bear fruit, and keep on bearing, and that your fruit may be lasting, lasting fruit. We're talking about the legacy, the posterity, what you do that future generations can benefit from. We've talked about different topics. We started out when I shared with you the, the fundamentals, the prism of his possibility, how God selects his people. And I talked about the purpose for his choice, the prism of his choice, the purpose for his choice. We talked about the power of his choice. We talked about the principles of his choice. The idea was for God to come choose you from the foundation and now he comes to live in you and do his wonders through you that is the exciting life we're living in today and um, we talked about the possibilities of his choice what are the possibilities of his choice i'm going that was yesterday i'm going to give you a quick recap about the possibilities of his choice and then today's topic is the posterity the posterity of his choice what it means to see things from God's perspective. When I was talking about the prism of his choice, I mentioned that um, how does God see things? How does he select things? He chooses the simple things to confound the wise. That's how God does things. He does amazing, amazing things. So we've been talking about the possibilities of his choice. Yesterday we talked a bit about that, the possibilities of his choice. And um, I'll do a, a quick recap for all of you that are watching me. Thank you, Alison. I'm glad you all joined me this morning. I see we have Heavenly. I've mentioned that already. I've mentioned your name already. And Sidonia, God bless you. We're talking about, I know Alison is on is watching. We're talking about what God has done as a result of choosing you. It said, you haven't chosen me, but you've chosen me, but I have chosen you and I've appointed you to go and to produce results and that your results, your, 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 your fruit may remain. So if you understand that, it changes how you approach life. Now, I'm going to do a quick recap from yesterday. I'm going to read a few things. Uh, I talked about the possibilities. What are the possibilities of a choice? All the possibilities you can discover in God, you can find in you. Anything that God can do, you can do. That is the idea of him coming, the principle which is to come and indwell you. The Bible says, I will dwell in them. The principle for God's choice of you is that he will indwell you. He can be tabernacled in you. God bless you, Fengi. Hallelujah. God bless you, John. Hallelujah. 
Now, God wants to live in you. Think about the possibilities of God living in a human. What can God do? Wrapped up in your flesh. That was the idea yesterday. The Bible says in Acts 22, verse 14, and it says, The God of our Father has chosen you. You are God's choice. He has chosen you. Hallelujah. You are His choice. I've heard people say, well, I'm praying to see whether God is calling me. No, He called you already. Follow me. Hallelujah. That is the greatest call you can ever have. Follow me. I will make you. He didn't say, follow me and I will give you. He said, I will make you. If you are made by God, if He makes you, Everything else that you're looking for to receive, you can produce. God is trying to make you a producer. He's not trying to make us consumers. He's trying to make us. God's idea is to make us like himself, creators of solutions into our world. What is possible with God? It's possible with you. Once you believe this, you begin to see amazing, amazing miracles. God has chosen you that you should know his will. You are his choice to know his will. Wow, wow, wow. Boy, what a joy when a man or a woman knows the will of God. There are no doubts. You have no fear. You have a boldness because you know this is the will of God. When you read the word of God, you smile and say, I know what I'm called to do. As I'm speaking to you, somebody's being healed now. That sickness is leaving you right now. Hallelujah. The will of God. Hallelujah. Who tends God bless you. And when I say my mother coughs because of our smoking, I rebuke that sickness. That's what I saw like a cloud in her lungs. I rebuke that now in Jesus' name. I see like some dark spots around her lungs. They are cleared up now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now I'm talking about what happens when you believe God's dreams. When you believe God's dreams. There is power in the hour you believe God's dream, there is power for your hour. The moment you believe God's dreams, the moment you believe God's will, He has chosen you that you should know. You should be aware. You should come to full realization of His intentions towards you, His will. And that you see the just one. What does that mean? You see God, you see Him, you see Jesus alive and you should hear the voice of his mouth for thou shall be his witness you shall become the one that produces the proof he is alive today hallelujah god bless you roxanne god bless you ernest ernest we had a great time yesterday in q a i love you son it was just a glorious time for those that didn't watch the q a it was riveting. It was exciting. I encourage you to go there, go back and watch some of the ba uh, past programs. And by the way, just to let you know, we have the business, uh, Kingdom Business Institute coming up next week from the 30th to the 2nd of December. 30th of November to the 2nd of December. It is going to be a full day of actual teaching. It's not preaching just to inspire you. It's going to be instructional a little different it's more of a classroom setting you're gonna come there and learn how to create brand new world you create systems that can create finances for you they can create businesses for you you can create a whole ecosystem that's what the meeting is next week about systems creation about um, strategy for changing times what strategies can you use for the changing times you're living in. The world is changing very, very rapidly. We want to go and be at the forefront, thinking about 10 years ahead of time. So that's what we're talking about, tapping into the dimension of the unseen. They are things that people haven't even thought of. God is revealing it today. You don't want to miss that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So we are talking about this. I want you to understand that God is doing something new and something good and something fresh with you. Something big, something amazing, something great, something good and something wonderful. But I want you to pay attention to this now. All the possibilities I discover in God, I find in myself. Let the word transport you to the realm of possibilities. When you're reading the word of God, let it transport you. Let it take you to the realm of possibilities. I see there is a transfer of possibilities. What I see in him is what I see in me. Jesus said, I do nothing except what I see my father doing. I like to read John chapter 5. It's one of my favorite passages of scriptures. It is amazing when you discover what Jesus sounds like. Hallelujah. He is a man. He was a man with God's dreams. And he was very convinced about God's dreams in him. Whenever a man or woman is convinced about God's dreams in him, people start start getting all confused and getting riled up what do you mean you know you think you're like god it's exciting to know that john chapter 5 jesus is speaking in verse 17 jesus answered and said my father works here on and i work <laughs> i like that my father works and i work i work and uh, when he said that, the Jews wanted to kill him. Because they could not understand. <laughs> okay, I see Emmanuel says, I, I strongly recommend that the Kingdom Business School should be on Facebook, especially for people who are, who are not close to you in the U.S. It is going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. We'll see what we can do. Uh, we have our, one of our technical directors uh, coming in back into the from California maybe she can handle some of the logistics to make sure it works but let me get this across to you they these are the days of creating brand new things God is always working and so are we hallelujah God is doing new things creating new things but most people just see what was created uh, I mentioned yesterday that when you see things being created you see uh, a new iPhone it's not just been created. They thought about this about two years ago or three years ago. You are just experiencing it. People are thinking ahead. They are thinking possibilities. They are living in a dimension of the future. We are those that have tasted of the powers of the world to come. When I see in him, I see possibilities. Hallelujah. Now, this is what Jesus said in verse 19. Then answered Jesus, verse 18, Then the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken <laughs> the Sabbath, he had not, uh, you mean Jesus broke the Sabbath? Yes, he did. He broke barriers. He, he, they said he broke the Sabbath. But he is the, the Lord of the Sabbath. The Sabbath was not made for us to worship it. We do not worship the Sabbath. We worship the one who created it. Hallelujah. So let's get that straight. I hear a lot of people sometimes get all bent out of shape. I'm not one of those people. Why? I believe what God has said about me. It's amazing. The possibilities of his choice. I'm giving you a quick recap. That when people start believing in possibilities, anything is possible. You see, Jesus, the Bible says, they said he had not only broken the Sabbath, but he said that God was his father. What a, what, what a bold thing to say. <laughs> Today we can say that, but back then they couldn't understand why God does not have children. God is God. And here comes Jesus. He said, God is my father. He said, my father. And they're looking at him like, what do you mean your father? God is not, God cannot be your father. God cannot be your father. They got all confused and were wondering, what are you talking about? I'm talking about living in the dimension of possibilities. When you go beyond that, how do you live posterity? Live something for posterity. The posterity 
of his choice. What do you do? How do people remember you? The Bible says the memory of the righteous is blessed. The memory, when people think of the righteous, it is a blessed memory. To think about how you blaze the trail in your world to leave a legacy for future generations to call you blessed. The Bible says all nations shall call you blessed. Think about this, the power of his posterity, the power of your choice when you accept his calling and you go about doing great things. Don't stay there. I, this morning, as I was getting ready, the Lord spoke to me. He said, tell the people to get off the shelf and dream with me. <laughs> tell my people to get off the shelf and dream with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus broke every barrier he met. He was not supposed to talk to a woman. He went and spoke to a woman, and she's just not a woman, a woman of Samaria, the outcast. And he made her a hero of the faith. Hallelujah. God said to me this morning, tell my people to get off the shelf and make life exciting again. Hallelujah. Maybe you're stuck in one place. You worry about making mistakes. The Lord is saying to you today, get off the shelf. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> As somebody said, he never disobeyed. You got to understand, Sabbath is not a day. Sabbath is a lifestyle. You got to understand this. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrew, we have entered his Sabbath and we have ceased from our own works. Sabbath is rest. It simply means that God rested, but not God finished. On the seventh day, he rested. When we enter into Christ, we enter the rest. <laughs> you got to understand this, folks, because if you don't understand what the Sabbath is, you will miss what the whole thing is all about. The Sabbath is not a day. The Sabbath is rest. So they made a day for rest. It wasn't about the day, it was about the rest. Oh boy, you got to get a hold of this. You got to get a hold of this. A lot of time, people are so caught up with things they don't understand. Let me tell you about the Sabbath. Sabbath was not meant to be a day. Oh boy, oh boy, don't get me started now. Hallelujah. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. I want to show you something amazing there about the rest. This is what the Bible declares. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 4. I like the word of God. Hebrews 4 verse 1, the Bible says this. Let us therefore fear less a promise being left of us entering his Sabbath or his rest. Hebrews 4 verse 1. Entering Sabbath, a lifestyle. You see, the same way, like when people talk about Resurrection Day. No, Jesus, when they said there's Resurrection Day, he said, no, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Resurrection is the lifestyle. Hallelujah. Of course, the dead in Christ will be raised. As a lifestyle, we have a revelation and anything that is dead, that is God's purpose around us, comes back to life. It's, got a, it's a different way. That's why you can see the difference in results. Hallelujah. Hello, Pamela. How are you? God bless you. You see, most people do not understand what the Sabbath is. So I just want to take that on for you to understand that you're entering a lifestyle of resting in the finished works. Hear this. God did not finish the work. He rested from the work. And when Jesus came, Jesus said, I have come to do the will of my Father and to finish the work so now oh come on can i talk to somebody today can i talk to you today when god rested that was temporary for the work to continue if you take a break does that tell there's more work yes more work does not mean the work is finished but when jesus came he said i have finished the works you have sent me to do now i don't have to go back and work i just enter the full and final rest of the finished works 
I step in there by faith, believing it's already done. And I go to the blindness and our eyes be open. I don't try to make it happen. It's already finished. <laughs> Hallelujah. You've got to understand what Sabbath is. So somebody was saying he observed the Sabbath day, the Ten Commandments. You've got to understand the Ten Commandments. If you miss one, you miss all. Man could not keep it. No wonder the Bible says in Galatians, it said, it said he has redeemed us. He has brought us back from that impossible system. Impossible system. It was impossible to observe those rules. That's why Jesus came and paid the price and set us free from that. And now all of the ten is fulfilled and is settled in two. Love God, love your neighbor. That covers all of it. And then Jesus sums all of that to the law called love. That is the royal law. The uh, first set of commandments in the Ten Commandments was loving God. The second one was loving people. If you love people, you don't steal from them. You don't hurt them. You don't do all those things. You don't kill them. You don't do any of those things. It's love. But people like, they like rules. They like laws. Before there was a commandment, before there was a covenant, there was love. And so God was rest restoring back love, back into the hearts of men. The Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. We don't serve God because we are auto. We, it's a, as a law. We serve Him because we love Him. Love is our motivation today to do things with Him. And that's what faith triggers. Faith works because of love. Hallelujah. I hope you're catching on to this. I see, I see our international director, Princess Reka. Hello. <laughs> Love is the motivation behind everything. So when people are talking about covenants and things like that, I said, no, I, 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 I'm not in that covenant. I am a child, the offspring of the covenant. He had a covenant and then I was born as a result of a covenant. So whatever agree agreement was entered into, guess what? I was born as a result of that. Now, I, I become the love child of his lovely covenant. Hallelujah. A better covenant. I become the child of love born out of that. Hallelujah. I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. So when somebody says about the Sabbath day, get back and read Hebrews. It says, it says, um, let's, it's a being left of us entering into his rest. Any of you should come short of it. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached. As well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. Why wasn't the message that they heard profit them? Because the Bible says that being that it was not mixed with faith. People did not get a hold of it to run with it. Get off the shelf and go and prove it. It couldn't work for them because they were holding on to the word without mixing it with faith. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When faith becomes activated, love releases the power. When faith is activated by love, the power is not a problem. Faith work it by love. I'm talking about a bit about a Sabbath. I'm going to go into my topic, but I need to address that because you have to understand what I'm talking about. See, so when you don't understand what I'm talking about, you might misunderstand me or you might misrepresent me or you might miscommunicate what I'm communicating to you. I hope you understand that. Okay, hear what the Bible says this. Verse 3, for we which have believed do enter into rest. We enter into Sabbath. As he said, I have sworn in my wrath if the... If they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. If it was finished, then why did Jesus say I came to finish it? It was finished in him. Now we are in him to manifest the finished works. I hope you understand that. We are in him to make reality the finished works. He paid for your sins. It was finished. But then when you believe it, you manifest the finished works. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. And to hear what I'm saying this. It tells you, it says, For his, his pick in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. 
and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Now, if God's here, what is saying, it tells you about Genesis chapter uh, chapter chapter 28 29 all the way down he talked about god rested okay now hear this now seeing therefore it remained that same some must enter therein and they to whom it was first preached enter not because of unbelief people did not enter because they did not believe it they did not believe that sabbath was a lifestyle rest in him was a lifestyle because you're resting on the revelation of the finished works you're resting that it is finished. So all you do, you're doing a playback of what was already finished. Hallelujah. What a life to live. When you understand this, it changes how life is lived. Are you hearing me? Now hear this. If, if you can read this, you can read this all the way through. It is exciting, but I, I just digressed a little bit because I don't want you to misunderstand when the Bible is talking about rest. Let's get back and read John chapter 5. And Jesus said, they said that he made himself equal with God because he said that he, God was his father or you are the son of God. You're making yourself equal with God. I'm talking about what happens when you know you are God's choice. The possibilities to be called a son of God, a, a daughter of God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, behold what manner of love. What manner of love? Boy, oh boy, that gets me all excited. That the Father has bestowed upon us that he calls us his own children, the sons of God. Hear this. To, be, to say you're a son of God, the Bible says that makes himself equal with God. Now, you didn't make yourself equal with God. He made you equal with himself. In other words, he puts you up in his class of being. In his class of being he put you up in his class of being your first class with God you are on God's class of people you are on the God class you are operating as deity you are partakers of his divine nature what am I saying the possibilities of you being his choice you begin to find it out it says this he make himself equal with God. Verse 19. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, 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 I say unto you, The son can do nothing of himself. That's a fact. But that's not the end of the statement. I've heard religious people say to me all the time, hmm. Oh, well, you know, you can't do that, you can't do that. See, without him, I can do nothing with him I can do everything so I rather go with him and do everything with him and me anything is possible God with you with God Charles with God thank you with God Tanya with God Emmanuel with God Donna with God anything is possible hallelujah and the poor little devil has nothing to do about it can't do a thing about it heavenly with God anything is possible think about that think about that it's an exciting lifestyle to live are you hearing me now let me let me read this it says verily I say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the father do okay that was my point yesterday I see what the father is doing I don't look at the word I look through the word and I see what the father is doing not what he used to do okay what is God doing right now that's what I want to see I don't want to see what he did that's already passed I want to see what he is doing the father is always working here unto the father is always working and because the father is working I am also working I'm talking about if God is living on the inside of you has chosen you to dwell in you as his principle to take over your body and how can God act if he lives really in you he acts without limits he is the same yesterday today and forever yes he is <clears throat> only if you let him be <clears throat> when you let him be he can be the same he's not the same if you don't let him be 
I let him be the same every day. When I hear about somebody dying, I just think, boy, my Jesus is the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, he says here, the son can do nothing of himself but what he sees the father do. For what things soever he doeth, this thing also doeth the son. The possibilities of his choice as a son of God, as a daughter of God. Whatever God can do, you can do. Whatever. See, God can do exceeding abundantly about all you can ask or think. So ask or think. God can do beyond your imagination. Push your imagination and see what wonderful miracles God can do. I like to do crazy miracles. Hallelujah. I like to think about things no one has thought about before. Technology that no one has ever thought about. Why can't we become the solution providers in the world? We try to be over spiritual. No, we, it's time we become practical. God was speaking to me this morning. He says, tell my people to get off the shelf and live again. The other word that the Lord gave me this morning was, was this. I'm going to read it. I had to write it down. He says, step away from your safe harbor. Step away from the place of comfort. Step, God was telling me this. He said, tell them to get away from the safe harbor. You, you've anchored your destiny uh, in a harbor. You're not doing anything. The ship of your destiny is just anchored and moored. It, uh, it just hooked up in a safe harbor. He says, step away. Push away from the safety of your comfort zone. And launch out into the depth of your destiny. For I have something glorious, a big catch for you. There are things are prepared in the deep areas that once you step out there, you begin to experience it. You cannot be playing safe, worried about religious people and what they think about you, worried about who you are with or who you're not with. You've got to step beyond those things and see the fullness of God's dreams. I hear some people say, well, you don't understand. You know, I'm a single parent. It doesn't matter. Oh, I'm married. It doesn't matter. Step away from the safe safety of your harbor where you felt comfortable. Safe environment and launch out and do something big and see what God can do. Wow. I like that. Launch out into the deep. Stop worrying about people's opinions. Stop worrying about what, who likes you or who doesn't like you. Who cares anyway? After a while, it's just one thing after another. Today they like you, tomorrow they don't like you. So why are you worried about it? Why are you giving such, such credence to their opinions when it has nothing to do with the word of God concerning you? The volumes have been written about you. Go and live it out. Stop worrying about people and what they say. Write that book. Hallelujah. Launch out into the depth of the great things. The great catch. Great catch. Great destiny. Launch out into the place of, you say, well, uh, I've passed the age, I'm retired. Retired from living? Do you want to die? He don't retire from life. If you're 70 years old, it's time to dream again. Let that dream propel you, become a fuel. You launch out into the deep and do something greater than you've done in your 70 years prior. Don't tell me, oh, well, I'm slowing down. Slowing what? Minds don't slow down engage that your spirit is still fully alive let the possibilities of the king be seen in your life let the possibilities of the king be seen in you i read the scriptures i get too excited i get too excited are you hearing me don't tell me well you know i used to i used to i don't want to hear about what you used to Stop talking about what you used to and start talking about what you're going to and what you're doing in the now. I like that better. Hallelujah. Don't tell me, well, left 10 years ago, I used to be rich. No, I don't want to hear it. Start making plans to become very successful again and see what God can do. Your second wind is coming to you today. Your best days are coming to you today. That's what I'm talking about right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
See, I heard people say, it's amazing. Those days, people would say a lot of things to me like, oh, just, just settle down, just do this. I've been, we've been to 87 countries and counting. Over 10 million people have been healed in our meetings. 10 million. If I was sitting there and playing the safety card, listening to people's opinion, nothing would have happened. I would have just been there miserable and never have anything done. Thank God I didn't listen to them. Jesus did not listen to the religious people. You love them, but don't allow their revelation to become your limitation. Don't allow their small thinking to limit God's big dreams in you. That's what I'm talking about today. Stop worrying about what people say about you and see through the word. Enter the word and see possibilities i don't think we're going to get down to talking about the posterity of his dreams but i'm going to continue in this vein because i know this is waking somebody up people are sitting back and just thinking oh i just want the church to grow church to grow there's a big world out there that you can impact them go to the business world go to the academic world go to the to art and entertainment world go to the, the to the um to the governmental world Go to the technology world. Let the glory of the king be seen in you. The possibilities. Don't get caught up with religious mindset. The way you can best serve God is by being the best at what he has called you to do in whatever field you're called to be. That's the best way you can serve God. You don't serve God because you said, I want to preach. That is one way of doing it, but that's not the only way of doing it. You can serve him being the best engineer. You can serve him creating the best invention, the biggest skyscraper. And when they know the reason for your creativity, they can turn to him too. Hallelujah. I don't like religious people talking around me. I, I can't stand it anymore. Hallelujah. Well, I never did anyway. So the religious people always get mad. Oh, he thinks he's so arrogant. You know, he's very arrogant. No, I'm confident. I know who has called me and I know what I'm called to do. I'm not mad at you. I'm just trying to inspire you to tell you God believes in you too. I don't want you worried about what people think about you. I'm just telling you, if you're religious, if somebody's religious, don't worry about what people say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the glory of the king radiate out of you let them see you in your finest the place of your brilliance the place of your brilliance where you can actually flourish and just shine hallelujah stay away from small-minded people from people that will belittle god's dreams in you stay away from them never allow anybody to diminish god's big dreams in you it doesn't matter what mistakes you've made in the past. I'm here to tell you, God picked you because he saw his possibilities in you alive. He saw his possibilities alive in you. God does not make a mistake about his choice. You are God's choice. He must have seen something about you to pick you because he knows you will reveal him to the world in an amazing way. You are not a copy. You are an original. You are a masterpiece. You are a masterpiece of greatness. That's what I'm talking about today. Possibilities. Maybe tomorrow I'm going to talk about the, I'm just going to add something. I'm going to talk about the posterity of his dream. But I just want to continue about the possibilities of his dream. Hear what the Bible says. I hope this is helping you. I hope this is helping all of you watching me today. Because you need to know what God sees in you <laughs> hallelujah that's a whole other topic what does God see in Charles what is it about me he is so mindful of what is it about you he is so mindful of to share this good news with you today what will happen to you when you listen to this over and over you will hatch off into different dimensions of possibilities. You will hatch off into miracles. Your body cannot stay sick anymore. You get up from your sick bed, make your bed of affliction, and get up and live again. When you think about things like that, it changes what you do. You're no longer worried about all the, the negative things that people have said about you. You're no longer worried about what religious people have said about you. You know one thing about religious people? They always have an opinion. 
of what they have not done. <laughs> they want to tell you, somebody came and told me, he said, brother, God is using you so mightily. Yes, but I want to give you advice, you know, stay humble. And I looked at the person and I said, number one, are you doing what I'm doing? Number two, how long have you been doing what I'm doing? You must be very arrogant to teach a man that's already doing what you've never even done how to do it better. You better sit down and learn from somebody who's gotten results. I'm not being arrogant. Some people need to be put in their place. They didn't call you. God called you. Hallelujah. God called you. Hallelujah. So you understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, you've got to think differently. Nisha, I know God is doing something great with you. Hallelujah. There are unlimited possibilities in this you know what i was thinking the other time maybe i should just stop the broadcast you know daily boost how I many of you would like me to stop the daily boost i just stop it i got a lot of things to do i got a lot of things i want to explore that god is speaking to me but i bring the daily boost because i know god told me to raise up a breed of people that can go and live an impact and the world that cannot be raised you make an impact that cannot be raised you live something for posterity because of the message you're hearing are you hearing me today? Are you hearing me today? Something wonderful is taking place. God is at work. God is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasures. Hallelujah. So I'm talking about the posterity, uh, but I'm going to keep talking about the possibility. Let's read a bit, a bit of uh, more scriptures. <laughs> Oh, Jim, I miss you, my brother. I miss you. Now, listen, you've got to understand that we are, are, are very focused. There is a new breed of people God is raising up without limitations. People that are not worried about what religious mindsets would bring to bear. We are not concerned about what the religious people will say about us. We are more concerned about what Papa says. We have a world to reach. Hallelujah. We have a world to reach. <laughs> you see, there's something God has put in you that needs to be explored. Let me read a little more scriptures here. For the Father loved you. For, oh, come on. I can't read this thing and not smile. It's, I, he's talking to me. I know he's talking to you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is talking to you. Hear this. For verse 20 of John 5, verse 20. For the father loves the son. He loves the daughter. He loves you. And he shows you all things. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This is what I'm talking about. The possibilities of his dream. If God shows you all things, what is all things? What are all things? What, what does all things mean to you? He shows him all things. In my Bible, I've circled all and things. All means everything is included. All means the summation of everything. All means anything and everything. Things has no definition. In other words, whatever I define the things to be, that's what it becomes in reality. <laughs> my, 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 my. He shows you, he reveals all things because of his love for you. How can you be with Jesus at work in you, with the Father at work in you, and still lack phrenesis, sunesis? You lack Sophia, you lack all of those things, experiential knowledge, you lack insight into realities. How could you miss that? How can you miss it? It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> you see, he says, he shows him all things <clears throat> that himself, that himself, God himself does. Oh boy, it runs in the family. My big brother should be that example. My, I love my big brother. He is, I look up to him. I walk with him and I talk with him every day. He says, come on Charles, let's go and have fun. My big brother Jesus. 
He's not ashamed to call me his brethren. He's not ashamed to call me his brother. He said, okay, Charles, let's have fun today. Teach them this. This is what daddy has given you. It says, teach them this. The Holy Spirit he comes and takes it from the Father and reveals of what my big brother knows to me. Hallelujah. It runs in the family. He is my Lord. He is my King. He is my love. Hallelujah. Hear this. Hear this. And he will show him great. Oh, come on. I can't read this anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm telling you. How can you read this and not get excited? Oh, he's talking about Jesus? No, Jesus now lives in you. Christ lives in you. The Father lives in you. He said, the Father and I will come and make our dwelling place in you, our abode in you. We'll come and manifest ourselves in you. Listen to this. And he says, and he will show him greater works, greater works, and you will do. Because it says, greater works than these shall you do. Why? Because you have seen the greater works. You see possibilities. You do possibilities. There are no impossibilities in Christ. No impossibilities. You've got a problem? That is your opportunity to tap into that unseen dimension. It, to others, it's unseen. To you, it is your domain. It is your domain. Hallelujah. It is exciting. It is exciting. Think about what God has called you to do. Stop thinking small. Stop hanging around people with small dreams. It's amazing. If you have a big vision, they will try to control you and try to put you in a box so that you will fit their box. But when you break free, you launch out into the deep. You get, you get away from the safe harbor of comfortability and self-congratulations self and everything. And a man's accolades. And step out into the deep, into the place where your greatest purpose and destiny is discovered. You begin to discover God at work in a different dimension in your life. Hallelujah. And the poor little devil can do nothing about it. I feel, I feel sorry for the devil. Once you know this thing, it's over for him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Once you understand this, there is a dimension of operation that is not open to everybody. You can talk and philosophize, but the proof of what you know is in your production and your productivity. Don't tell me quote scriptures. Go and do it. And see what God can do. <laughs> I feel sorry for the little devil to let you listen to me today. It's over. Hallelujah. I said to people, listen to me. And the devil is destroyed in your life. He cannot rule and reign over you anymore. You are operating in a different flow. Hallelujah. The life of Jesus is coming to you. Is coming to you now. Into your body. Into your legs. That weakness in your leg is leaving you. There is a power surge coming to you. To your knees. To your back. To your eyes. It's getting clearer again. It's coming to your finances. It's coming in full force to you now. Because the life of Jesus is unlimited life. The Bible calls it in Hebrews. The power of an endless life. That is the life that's on the inside of you. If you know that, then why are you settling for crumbs? Why are you settling for crumbs? Why are you settling for what religious people say? Oh, this is our system. Break free from those systems and create a brand new system. A brand new world that is after the heavenly pattern. Find out what heaven says and you can go and do it. Uh, we have a goal the next two years and Fangi knows she's on, on board with us. She's our director in Indonesia. The next two years from 2018, we have a push to reach 100 million people in just Indonesia. A hundred million people. It's easy. I see on the dimension of God. Hallelujah. That's small. We, we a hundred million people, we're going to overrun the devil. How do I know that? The Bible tells me in Acts chapter 19, it says that in two years, 12 men reached all of Asia. Two years, 12 men, all of Asia, they preached the gospel. Now think about this. They had no airplanes. They didn't have the technology we have today. They didn't have all the things. And I hear Christians make excuses 
I don't do excuses. You cannot have excuses and take actions. You either take action or you make excuses. I am not for excuses. I'm out for results. So the proof of what we know is what we do. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you. I hope this is helping you. We've got something that we got to get across to people. We need your partnership. And I want to encourage people that are you that are watching today. I, I encourage you. This is our goal. We want to start building it. I, I'm going this afternoon. I promise you, I'm going to do a little bit of I'm going to do a little bit of tour to see some of our, our facilities. We, it's going to come up to you and you're going to see it a little bit. It's going to be fun. Just show you some of the things we've been building. Just so you understand. That's why we need your support. Because we want to break free. Uh, we wanted to go on some television network, some Christian television network. And they started putting limitations to what I could say or not say. What I can show or not show. And then the Holy Ghost said to me, build your own. If they cannot allow you to come, they want to filter the gospel. Don't let anybody do that. And so we decided now we're going to build a totally different system. We are building a television station online that is going to go across the globe. That's what we're doing now. I'll show you a little bit. These are some of the things we're doing. But we need your help. We need your support. We want to be able to get this thing running. It's very expensive. Some of the equipment we want to get, they're very expensive. We already got some equipment. We have what they call a TriCaster that can play the, the, the program 24-7. But we need other things that can add to this because everything is in high definition and we're actually doing 4K. We want to ops also future-proof what we do. So what am I saying this to you? Let's build something together that they cannot filter this message. Religious people don't want, don't want to hear that you can do it too. They want to make it an exclusive club. But God has sent us to you to lift you up, to tell you what he has called you to do is amazing. And you are God's choice. The fullness of him that feels all in all is at work in you. Hallelujah. I hope you can get my drift today. If I get excited about it, hallelujah, you know I'm excited. we got things to do. We have people to reach. We have nations to go to. We have people to love. We have miracles to perform. We have people to heal, to save, to deliver. Saviors have come out of Zion. Deliverance and deliverers have come out of Zion. You are deliverance. When you get there, they're saved. They're saved. Simple as it is. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. 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 Now, let me, let me wrap this up. I, I can't act. Boy, oh boy. I'm just full right now because the Spirit of God is at work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what am I telling you today? You are God's choice. If you are God's choice, let me tell you, this is what the Bible says. He says, he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. Have you ever noticed how Jesus spoke? He spoke as if he's talking about somebody else. He was talking about himself. I like that. You talk about yourself. You said, the father loves the son. He loves the son. And he has given all judgment to the son. When you talk like that to people, they look at you like, hmm. Are you the son? Yes, I know I am. I'm not confused about my identity. I know I'm loved of my father. He said, because the father loves the son. It tells you right there. Because he loves the son. He shows. See, the son sees what the father does. And whatever the father does, the son does. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works, greater possibilities than this so that you may marvel oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy i like the word of god i just want to run around this place the studio and enjoy myself it is wonderful it is exhilarating do you understand what i'm talking about it is so exhilarating that once you understand this you can't keep it to yourself you gotta tell somebody hallelujah hear what it says Verse 21, for as the father raises up the dead, I'm talking about, I just moved my topic back to the possibilities of his choice. And for his choice, what is possible? 
For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, or make them come alive, even so the Son quickeneth whom he wills. Wow, wow, wow. Can't handle it anymore. It's too much for me. I don't know whether you can handle it. I'm in an overflow state. All I can see are pictures of people being raised from the dead. Hallelujah. <laughs> I love the word of God. It is loaded. It is full of life. It is full of life. I was, I'm, I was looking at some of my old notes. This is what I was looking at. Christ's realities are my possibilities. What I taught a while ago. I said, number one, they are no impossibilities in Christ. First Corinthians, Second Corinthians 2 verse 14. Now, we thank, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Always causes you. Always. There are no impossibilities. There are no impossibilities with you. I'm talking about, I'm talking about you are God's choice. The possibilities of his choice. The possibilities in his choice. And the possibilities for his choice. You are chosen of God. This is what is possible with you. He causes you to be triumphant always. And maketh manifest the savour of his knowledge by us. That knowledge is made known by our appearance. The knowledge of his triumph, that knowledge, the fragrance, the taste, the experience of, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Can you get this? He maketh manifest the savor. The savor means the taste, the smell, the touch, the reality of his knowledge by us that means for them to know for them to know that knowledge of God the taste of God taste and see that the Lord is good when they see you they experience the goodness of God in other words he's saying he is he, you are the ones that make the knowledge of God tangible feasible visible viable are you hearing me viable he's saying to you you are the ones that make it happen without you nothing can happen with you and God everything is possible I hope you get what I'm saying hallelujah we are the select elect thank you Jim I love you see I get excited because you understand what I'm talking about don't settle listen to what the word of God is saying we are right now we are on target we are on target to raise <laughs> to raise something to get out i'm going to do a quick a quick um uh behind the scenes show you guys a little bit about what some of the things we are doing here that way you can see there's a lot of activities going on we are moving things at a record pace god has told us to to get a lot of things done so we're going to get it done i'm going to be showing that to you and uh, it's going to be exciting this afternoon and then what i want to do is i was thinking we have so many videos i want to put put to you all videos so that it can inspire you to go and do the same thing and new videos we haven't even touched but I'm, I'm, what I, I'm trying to get across to you is this, that we want to make these things available so that 24-7 you can come on any time, see miracles, hear teaching, you know, get some good uh, other, other ministers that actually flow like this, put them together, and we can go 24-7 on live stream, on Facebook. You can click anytime and you can watch this so it doesn't have to be at certain times. We can do it in half an hour segments or an hour segments. Those are the things we are planning on doing right now. But we need your help. We have to raise well, about, just about $100,000 before the year runs out so that we don't have to be paying other people to get on, on their television network. We don't have to do that anymore. We can just focus on building something that you can just hear us anytime you want. And we will bring on other amazing people that can actually teach you the Word of God. We have a whole studio we're putting up together, a bigger one. Later on, you can see it. We'll show it to you. It's going to be exciting. We'll show you segment by segment. But I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. Let me show you something here. The Bible says, and make it manifest the savour of his knowledge. 
to manifest the taste, the experience, the tangibility of his knowledge by his choice. You, in every place, not in church, not in church, not in the church, not in the church, in the church, at home, at the mall, everywhere. You are the manifestation of the tangibility of the unseen Christ. For them to know him, you must show up. You must believe you are his choice. And then you can go and, <laughs> and have fun doing this. I give it number two just to I'm feeling generous today hallelujah always hear this now number two number one there are no impossibilities in Christ number two if I know how real Christ is in me I don't know you can write this down start with that if I know if you know how real somebody can write this down how real that's the key if you know how real the reality Christ is not was is in you it will translate that knowledge would translate into undeniable actions that manifest Christ I'm going to say it again. Hear this. If I know how real Christ is in me, it will translate into undeniable actions that manifest Christ. I think I'll continue with that tomorrow because that is a mouthful. It is loaded. It is loaded. It is loaded. I taught this. If you want to get this, you can call our office. This is called Christ Realities Are My Possibilities. This is what I taught several years ago, but I, I thought it was relevant now. The Holy Spirit said, I want you to show them what I have told you all these years, how you operate, what dimension you operate. It tells me if I know. If I know, that's the key. Epignosis, revelation. If I know how real, if I know he is real, how real he is, Christ is in me. It will translate immediately. It will transform, translate. It will change. It will morph into undeniable. The actions will be bold and undeniable actions that will manifest what I know about Christ. It is too loaded. I think I'm going to stop there for today. But I want to encourage you. This is what we have a goal. If you can, the, the year is running out for tax purposes. If you want to sow, that would be helpful. We, if you're in the United States, we can write you. We can do a tax write-off for something. Maybe it could be a, even a legacy. You want to sow something towards this television um, network we're putting together online. You know, guess what? A lot of people are doing that. CNN is online. We want to be able to do that. Hire some more staff and do that. We want between now and the end of the year. If God is speaking for you to sow, we need some people that can sow $10,000. You can sow $5,000. Whatever you can sow, $1,000, $550, $100, whatever you can sow. We'll show you a little bit so that you see what effort we have. We've been making over the last couple of years just to put this thing together and run it 24-7. And you can just go up there and you can connect with us, connect with other people that are connected with us, and you can see the programming very soon. We're having a whole list of programs. We'll have some talk shows. We'll have other things. We are developing this as a network. But we need your support. We need your support. We need your support. These are not things that you do easily. These are, these are big ventures that we actually would need your help. And in a short time, I will show you guys later today what we are working on. I hope that will be, be a tremendous, tremendous joy to you to know that you're part of something amazing. I want to say thank you again. And you can go to Christlove.org. 
go to christlove.org and click donate you can send your seats there or you can go just write um charles and Devon, p.o box 72800 providence rhode island 02907 02907 providence rhode island 02907 and then you if you want to make out a check just make out a check to um christ love that's all you need christ love media you can do that but you can send out a check to that or you can just send it just write my name we'll direct it directly into that because everything we do is we want to reach the world for jesus our goal is at least two billion souls two billion souls in 20 years we can do it we are going full force that's our mission that's our goal we want to make sure you can be part of it somebody said to me what do you mean um, uh, when I throw numbers I have we have a strategy God has given us strategy we have reached over 10 million people already and that is without a lot of extra work but now we're going for it the next 20 years it's gonna be phenomenal we don't want to miss it let's go for it we have absolutely amazing strategies but I want to say I love all of you thank you all for being part of it register again to be part of the business school kingdom business institute and hopefully our guys are, are able to connect some things and make some things happen and then you can watch if you cannot come directly here we can i mean because this is a school this is different from just having a conference it's not a conference it's not a conference i make it clear to you it's a school it's a school where you learn some things we have material you're going to be reading and things like that we want to make it practical and hopefully we can do that and connect that with all those that are watching online okay but I want to say thank you again for watching us today we love you very much and uh, we are looking forward to another exciting day with daily boost I know Pastor Don is coming up at uh, later this afternoon but you get ready for lunch break and I know six o'clock we have heaven's news God is doing something 630 Dr. Jeff is on with a prayer line we are doing great things in the kingdom of God and I want you to tell me what other things you're doing and we can connect with all of you okay I want to say I love all of you and I believe the best about you this is your moment to launch out into the deep for your destiny awaits you God bless you I love you I'll see you guys again tomorrow or maybe this afternoon when i show you a bit of the the studio god bless you amen